Hello and good morning and welcome to Life, Love and Blues Harmonica Licks again. Um, hi. I've got the subject of bending on my mind today. Um, bending obviously in terms of uh, bending notes on the harmonica. Um, it's such a huge subject in diatonic harmonica that it's really one of the only subjects. I always tell people that you don't learn to bend like one day you can do it, one day you can't do it and then one day you can. You need to do it all the time to keep your precision up, to keep your chops together, to keep them sounding good. Um, it takes a long time to train your mouth and tongue to do what they need to do to achieve the the effect of bending on the harmonica which is very odd sounding and it's one of the um, obviously the classic sort of harmonica sounds that people associate <laughs> stuff. Um, it's very misunderstood. I've got so much to say about bending. Let's just say this is a little introduction to one of many videos most likely that I will uh, bring bending into because it's so much. Thing number one that freaks me out is that if you imagine this is your uh, imagine this is your draw read and this is your blow read okay when you bend say your two draw you, obviously your draw read starts to flap but when you arrange your mouth into the correct shape for the bend it starts to agitate the upper read as well and the actual I think when the uh, bends in full flow, the bottom reed is stopped altogether, and it's the top reed actually creating the sound. So it's very, very strange and a complete fluke of um, <clears throat> physics, as far as I'm aware. I don't believe um, it was an intended part of the design of the instrument. Can't have been. That's madness. <laughs> Who would inflict that on people? Maybe it was. Um, I've always assumed it was a kind of a fluke of uh, physics. But it's paved the way for so much harmonica music. It's very, very strange. And in many ways, becoming good at the harmonica is becoming good at bending. Um, because otherwise, you're stuck to the notes of the diatonic scale. And who wants that? I don't. Um... So I've picked a lick um, that's got a lot of uh, bending action on the three draw um, and I, it will be devilishly tricky if you're not very competent with your bending but obviously that makes it a great lick to practice to, um, to get your bends in there. There's a couple of very tricky bits. Anyway, I'll stop blabbering and I'll go play it. So we're starting with a dip on the three draw. Um, so we're starting bend and releasing, but we're not releasing all the way to the natural three. Um, we want to keep it down to that uh, the B flat there. So it's and then bong dip, uh, down to uh, a three draw full step bend down to the A. So all of that take a fair amount of bending chops really so and there we go 
roll off to the two draw, and then two blow, one draw, and then we're going to go back to the three draw, hold step bend down to the A, which is, so coming off the, the challenge there is coming off the one draw, and get to get down to that A. And then finishing off with a two draw. Okay, um, lovely little uh, lick I came up with recently with um, a guy I was working with, t uh, specifically to test the uh, three draw bend prowess. Okay, uh, test train, infuriate, however you'd like to call it. So as usual, I'm just gonna play with this lick. I'm just gonna repeat the lick for the first chorus and then I'll start varying it um, and adding different bits in and whatever. Business as usual. Um, so, MCCD sessions, we've got a, a shuffle in E here. Let's see if I can avoid messing this up.
still don't caught me off guard there. Um, there you go. Um, really good practice for the three draw. Um, that's it. See you next time.